I want to talk about Netflix for just a moment, because when Netflix's Reed Hastings decided to inject $100 million into Black banks, he did so after reading a book by our next guest. So we're joined now by Marissa Baradaran, author of The Color of Money, Black Banks and the Racial Wealth Gap, and UC Irvine law professor, law school professor. Thanks so much for joining us today, Marissa. Thank you. That's the best pronunciation of my name I've ever heard. So, oh, you know, I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm hoping you can, you know, briefly give us a lay of the land. We already know that Black communities are underbanked, underserved. They pay more in fees for banking and financial services. I'm wondering if you can kind of highlight for us how this has really kept uh, or helped drive poverty in Black communities. Yeah, so, you know, it, everything starts uh, back at the New Deal with the FHA maps and the redlined. Um, uh, sort of uh, structure of risk um, that was done in 1934. And the banking sector that we have today builds on mortgage credit. Mortgage credit fuels um, wealth creation for the middle class. It fuels a ton of, you know, bank uh, profits. And, and really, you know, uh, the majority of credit, at least for the middle class, um, is mortgage or, or student loan credit. And all of that um, sort of, uh, you know, the, the Black community was redlined and not um, sub, did not get that credit subsidized. Um, and, and that was through policy, and then it was perpetuated by banks. And so that kind of st those structural, um, explicitly race-based inequalities perpetuate to this day, such that you, you, you know, Black home ownership gap is massive, the wealth gap is massive and doesn't close over time. It has not closed. And part of the reason is homes in Black neighborhoods don't increase in value the same way that homes in white neighborhoods do. And so when you have Black banks or any bank on top of that market, it really creates a difficult um, profit trap. And so that's kind of the history that I lay out in the book, using banks to explain sort of broader broader social structures and, and why um, individual businesses can't alone overcome these these patterns without sort of system, systematic change. Right. Now, you say that you actually need capital to build more capital. As I just mentioned, Reed Hastings gave $100 million. But how much more capital is needed? We need the amount of capital that was uh, provided to the American middle class, no more, no, no less. Um, and, and part of that is it's not exactly capital. It's not just, you know, here is capital. It is an investment with a long-term commitment to grow. So the, what, the, what the FHA does initially is it doesn't actually infuse capital. It guarantees a system of credit that is very low risk, that is underwritten by the federal government. But it's, the capital comes from private, the private sector. It's just the, the government programs lower the risk. It's sort of what the Fed does with its monetary policy. And, and that kind of structural um, uh, you know, maneuvering is what's needed for, for black communities. So it's not, I, I don't advocate, you know, all, you know, people just donating into these areas. It really does have to be structural. It does have to be, you know, linked to Fed policy and to treasury policy and to congressional policy. But it's also great, you know, like Netflix did and other um, firms did instead of, you know, uh, just making these broad statements about Black Lives Mattering or, you know, my social media, we're going to, you know, uh, express this commitment to actually put your money where your mouth is, which is um, investments in, in certain communities. And that's what businesses can do. There's what policymakers and voters can do. But then there's um, what, a, what a business who's interested in actually not perpetuating these inequalities um, can, can commit to. So on that point about what policymakers can do, because I was speaking recently with economist and reparations expert, Dr. Sandy Darity, and he kind mm -hmm. of highlighted that the top five black banks have two billion in assets. Seems like a lot when you until you contrast that with the roughly three trillion dollars just J.P. Morgan has just so without yeah. that policy, without policymakers um, really addressing this, because that seems like an impossibly large gap to bridge. I mean, is it absolutely critical that we have to get policy behind this in order to try to bridge that gap? Absolutely, because policy created it. That's why. It's not It's not a, a, a handout. It's just repair. It's damages for what policy created. It's not just redlining. It's the you know, discriminatory sort of criminal justice system. It is you know, hundreds of years of Jim Crow. And then the implicit and explicit racism that is still ongoing. But more, what I try to do is focus on the structures of, of inequality that, that keep this wealth gap perpetuating, right? So it's not just the Black banks combined. Look at the Black wealth combined, right? So when we think of Black wealth, sometimes you think of, oh, Oprah or LeBron James or, you know, 
the five black billionaires that there are. I don't even know, know if there are that many, but you look at the combined black wealth versus the combined white wealth and it's staggering. I mean, combined black wealth is 1% per of the total pie. Um, the, the, the gap between even highly educated, high income white families versus high income black families is also massive and, and hasn't closed in hundreds of years. So there's something else going on, right? Even wealthy black families, their homes aren't increasing in value in the same way that wealthy white family homes do because of certain um, ways that we code race into uh, home values. All right, Marissa Baradaran, author of The Color of Money, Black Banks and the Racial Wealth Gap. I'm gonna be picking up that book soon. I hope you come back to join us on Yahoo Finance. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.